I believe that very few companies, if any, except us, actually tackling this problem. DeFi decentralized apps are essentially somehow at one part of their pipeline centralized still. Yep. So we always had this approach of building something which is more like Bitcoin of data kind mm -hmm. of vision. People tend to somehow centralize everything yeah. and go for an approach where you have like, okay, here is your endpoint, like take it or leave. I think it's like a pretty bad idea like to use a token as a payment scheme, mm -hmm. but one SQD represents like one unit of bandwidth uh, on the network. So for example, if you want to make a lot of requests and you want to make a lot of data, then you need more SQD to lock. The cost of access is already like like at least 200 uh, more efficient compared to RPCs. Space Monkeys, blasting off with Marcel and Dimitri, they're co-founders of SQD, formerly known as Subsquid. You may have heard about the giant squid. We're very lucky to have them with us on the show. It's actually a long time coming. Welcome, guys. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks for having us. Very nice to have you. Uh, SQD, as it's called today, providing a very important function in the Web3 space. How do you describe it to, you know, your grandmother, what you do and what SQD is all about? Let me do the elevator pitch for, for grannies because I'm the non-technical co-founder. Perfect. But yeah. essentially it's search. It's similar to what Yahoo and Google did uh, 20, 30 years ago mm -hmm. with kind of like indexing the internet and then making this data available and searchable. And we're doing a similar thing just for blockchains. Mm -hmm. This is like the high level granny pitch. These blockchains, every block, they're producing more data. And that data is freely available, but it's not necessarily useful. And you guys make it something you can work with. Is that right? Yeah, but also there is like an even more fundamental problem is that uh, by design, the blockchain nodes are built to reach a consensus. So they're not really a database, right? And uh, that you can actually take the data out of these nodes is more like a well, afterthought and uh, it's incredibly inefficient. So what we've built and what we uh, kind of uh, try to evangelize is that uh, taking the data from the nodes is not the way how you do that. Hmm. Instead, you need to have a specialized read optimized database from where uh, you can read this data at scale. And not only you can like read this data like in a raw format, but also you can have like structured data. So basically you can have a meaning out of it, right? Because like the, at the end of the day, uh, the nodes on the blockchain have their like one single job, basically, like to make sure that you have an immutable state, that it is permissionless. It's basically about writing data. Yeah. And reading data is a completely different workload. It's a completely different database, like in the Web2 world, I would yeah. say. And, but in Web3, uh, I believe that very few companies, uh, if any, except us, actually tackling this problem in the sense that uh, not just like putting this data into some, uh, I don't know, Postgres or like ClickHouse, but actually making a decentralized network with the same uh, properties as a node, but it's meaning that you can always access this data. It is decentralized. It is like working on scale, uh, but it's optimized for reading, not writing, right? So Got it. Yeah. So when, when the nodes are trying to reach consensus, they don't they don't need all of the little nuances of the data that's in the yeah, previous yeah, chain. Not all the history as well. Yeah. And uh, also uh, they're not supposed to be hit by say million users, right? Like trying to request this data. Yeah, right. So what are some applications or use cases for reading this blockchain data besides the consensus? Well, basically like anything that is like built on top of blockchain for consumers yeah. uh, has to somehow show and read this data, right? So for example, anything of analytics or like any kind of DeFi application, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you normally need to, to show like at least what assets are there, like what is the current price? Like if you have some personalized experience, like the history of transactions, yeah. like even for a wallet, you really need an indexer. You cannot really build any meaningful user experience without having index data. Because like the node cannot really give you uh, the history of like account transactions normally, but even if it does, uh, it is not scalable to like, even like 10,000s of users, right? So right. Uh, that's why pretty much all the uh, applications uh, in a, like Substrate and Polkadot world are using an indexer one way or another. And I would say that we were 
probably like the only company who takes like the full stack seriously. So it's not just like getting this data, but also uh, how you transform it, how you decode it, because like Polkadot has their own uh, scale codec, uh, which we built our own custom implementation of it. So there's like a lot of tooling that because like the data is also kind of upgradable in the bulk of that world. Yeah, yeah. right. So yeah, Substrate is basically like a beast of its own. And uh, there are multiple kind of pieces of this like data stack to retrieve it. And we uh, invest a lot of time and effort to maintain all the pieces. Like, okay, so I think I'm seeing the picture here. You're, you're indexing this data, which is useful for, as you said, wallets, block explorers, DeFi analytics, basically any dashboard we see. They're not reading from the full node, they're reading from an indexer. But I mean, this seems a little strange to me because isn't that like relying pretty heavily on a centralized source of truth, this indexer? We need to go a little bit more into details mm -hmm. uh, how it would work. We are not uh, indexing this data ourselves in a sense. The indexing process can be seen more of a, like a pipeline. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a decentralized uh, layer, a decentralized database where uh, the raw data is stored across like thousands of nodes. Yeah. It's more or less the same data as in a blockchain node, but stored in such a way that you can access it at scale. And then uh, you have uh, SDK, the tooling that basically people can run on their own and that makes it decentralized. So you can host it, like for example, on your own premises, you can host it, uh, of course, in some uh, centralized solutions, but then uh, it is reproducible. Anyone can run and get the same uh, result, yeah. essentially. And uh, this is where all this kind of uh, transformation from unstructured to structured data happens. This isn't the norm in the indexing industry in Web3, right? This is a different approach? Yeah, I mean, like people tend to somehow uh, centralize everything yeah. and uh, go for approach where you have like, okay, here is your endpoint, like take it or leave it, right? Yeah, exactly. We like dissect everything, basically making it modular, mm -hmm. decentralizing the key kind of like upstream part, and then providing the tooling uh, for everyone else like to build, recreate, and you have a network of nodes basically who have indexes data, which can then be built upon to structure, ah, to structure the data on top of it, yeah. I just wanted to uh, add, when we were speaking about decentralization, yeah. uh, that that's like one of the core reasons why we actually started SQD or Subsquid back in the days. It was, yeah. okay, I mean, not, like not many people believed in Bitcoin at the beginning, right? Mm. And not people understood why decentralization matters, why it matters to have something permissionless, trustlessness. And these are like keywords. And we just noticed that actually the entire data access layer is completely centralized. Yeah, right. And all of these DeFi decentralized apps are essentially somehow at one part of their pipeline centralized still. Yep. And this is something we wanted to change. So we always had this approach of building something which is more like the Bitcoin of data kind mm -hmm. of vision mm -hmm. of really trying to build everything from the ground up to really make it fully permissionless and decentralized. And that's the mission we are on. And that's essentially also uh, what you just asked. Isn't it centralized and then no. It's not. And that's, yeah. I think, really the big, big differentiator to, as far as I know, almost all of the competing solutions out there, they're not fully permissionless and decentralized. So and that's cool. really the big deal. How does this this SQD token, yeah. how does that actually work? What's the utility of that for making this decentralized vision? So, like, first of all, we are right now uh, transitioning from the previous version of the what we called SQD archives to the decentralized network, SQD network. Yeah. So the archives were like completely uh, free to use because like we didn't want to some kind of monetize the centralized solution until we have the decentralized one. Yeah. And in the decentralized, you basically uh, have to stake SQD tokens in order to access this data. So uh, the model is that uh, mm. You do not pay with the token for the data because I think it's like a pretty bad idea like to use a token as a payment scheme. Mm. But uh, it's rather that like one SQD represents like one unit of bandwidth uh, on the network. So for example, if you want to make a lot of requests and you want to make a lot of data, then you need more SQD to lock and access uh, and that gives your own you like personal a pipeline to the data. Yeah. Oh, if that's you cool. just want a little bit, then yeah. you can lock a little bit and that would be enough. Yeah. And the good part is that you don't actually spend this SQD. Basically mm. like you can unlock it when you're done. Mm. Uh, but yeah, normally people just like keep it locked because like this is how like your application is running, right? Like yeah, yeah. seven, so you just like keep it locked. All right, so uh, a lot of our audience is deep into the Polkadot ecosystem, but 
curious what projects are using SQD outside of Polkadot right now? Like, what are some major names that we might know about? I'm the name dropper guy. Yeah, drop, so those, drop those names. Drop those names. Uh, GMX, Pancake Swap, cool. Shiba Inu. Those are, I, I would say, probably like the bigger names. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then Peak is using us. I think they also have. Awesome. I think they're also substrate based. Peak, Peak, Peak is a roll up on Polkadot. Oh, so it, it yeah. is a parachain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, I mean, we have close to 200 projects using us. Sweet. And a lot of still like market share, like. In Polkadot, obviously, yeah, uh, I would say almost most of the parachains probably use SQD data in one way or another. Yeah, the Tensor, yes, they just, for example, use the tooling, and we don't necessarily even know yeah, that right. these people are using us because, so cool. like, you can pick uh, which parts of the stack you actually want, mm -hmm. and. Uh, some people, for example, want to use our centralized cloud, uh, but some people want to have everything in-house. Uh, we also have um, another company called DeepDep. Uh, they have their own uh, Python-based stack on top of the SQD data. And uh, I know that they are working directly with HydroDX for uh, making, I think, DEX screener API-like style. Okay, so yeah. it's a very big project uh, funded by the HydroDX treasury, I yeah. believe. Okay. So basically, they built the whole stack on top of the SQD data. Wow. All right, so you mentioned that most of the rollups or parachains on Polkadot are accessing the data one way or the other. You're also serving the main Polkadot relay chain as well. Yes. Right. We see you come through OpenGov for treasury funding every once in a while. What's the nature of that service that you're providing the, the main treasury? Yeah, so uh, there are multiple things here. So it's like the service itself. So basically operating uh, the like these uh, gateways, uh, which is called uh, SQD archives. And this is something that is going to be like transitioned gradually to the uh, decentralized gateways, yeah. in which case it will be like token-based. Uh, and also the support of the tooling uh, which is like the SDK, the substrate, support specific palettes. So for example, there is like this ongoing transition of, of the transfers to the asset hub, right? So that like all the indexers that are dependent on the SQD data uh, are fully supported. Also like new types of transactions. So you have to come in and make sure that you're still yeah, compatible with the whole so network, right? Yeah, so yeah. we have to uh, keep our tooling up to date because there are like, a lot of projects downstream that are dependent on it. And uh, we're actually pretty close with the uh, Parity and Web3 devs. So basically sure, sure. they open issues directly in our GitHub mm -hmm. and we like know uh, well ahead about the upcoming changes so we can gotcha. adopt them. Yeah, yeah. Also with the Parity data team. So yeah, uh, I would say that it's all like infrastructure plus the like maintenance re required for that. Got it. Those proposals are always historical. So I think the last one is like from 24 sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, it always takes some time for us to like catch up with the accounting, then actually check really what were the the spend specifically yeah. for Polkadot slash Kusama, mm -hmm. uh, and then like how much should we pay for the engineer and stuff. And essentially, um, then we yeah, set up these proposals, usually pretty late, uh, and then get the funding retroactively. Uh, but for us, it's important to always show like we are always working on the latest stuff coming into the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, Substrate is where we were born, right? Where yeah, we were yeah. raised, essentially, yes, where yeah. everything started out. That was the biz, uh, like the big. A business vertical uh, where we started out so it's it's for us i think it's just natively like we have to do it we want to do it and that's why we keep on supporting it and also up until today i mean we are parts of many ecosystems right we're pre pretty agnostic here but the builders in polkadot like those are really i think the real true builders you know it's it's yeah, it's yeah. always the same maybe i'm biased here but i think the community is really strong I totally agree. And yeah, I think you can feel the origin story there. It feels like we're all cut from the same cloth trying to yeah. decentralize everything, right? Yeah, it's like, I think Polkadot is really like the real deep tech kind of scene. Yeah. And I, like all of the people here, like, I don't want to name drop now, but uh, there was somebody I asked, like, why are you like only doing this for Polkadot? Like you could easily expand this business you're doing to other chains. Yeah, like yeah. every minute I don't spend on Polkadot. It's like a waste of my time was his answer. And like, it's such a bullish statement. Totally. And yeah, I think that's that's why we're here. Crazy. Now uh, we have some big, big, big changes coming up in Polkadot. Uh, the whole jam upgrade, uh, the decentralized data lake. How's this interacting with what you're building? We have like different parts of our stack, like where things may change. Normally everything is so flexible that we don't necessarily need to like rebuild a lot. Yeah. It's just like, for example, like, 
transition of this like transfers to asset hub didn't really require much of work on uh like the sdk part itself but like it, it required some changes upstream on the people who actually like do the actual indexing uh i think something like that also applies to jam so uh pretty much most of the tooling will be reusable yeah it's just that uh the way that this data extracted and indexed and indexed may, may change mm. so um things are by and large still in flux i believe so uh it's like a gradual process but like it's important that like we basically stay in touch with the dev teams uh at parity and, and like yeah. Theory, yeah are you gonna have to index the data lake as well our mission is basically like to make uh everything that is uh stored on chain yeah uh, easily on -chain. accessible through sqd yeah got right? it. right so uh that's pretty much it and mm -hmm. uh our like ingestion pipelines are set up so that like whenever uh any new like previously parachain and uh, the service pops up right this data uh, is going to be uh downloaded and yeah, like, stored yeah. and served by the network okay yeah so uh, block by block we make sure it's accessible yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but that extra data that they're pulling from that doesn't matter right now actually uh our data lake is agnostic so uh we can store like any kinds of data and oh, okay. our plan is to also expand it to off-chain data as well yeah sure so and also serve like more structured data directly from the network as well so you don't even need an indexer at some point you just mm. like, can pull it straightly but it's more like in the roadmap and, yeah uh, yeah i mean it sounds huge but i guess with a decentralized structure you can actually achieve a lot more for uh, a lot more efficiently right yeah absolutely so the cost of access is already like uh at least 200 uh, more efficient compared to RPCs, yeah. and uh, or we know that, for example, we are way more efficient compared to Dune Analytics, for example, right? So in Dune, you can like make a query, yeah, and you have like a data set, yeah, but it's unfeasible to take this data, for example, mm. uh, for like internal analysis if you want to download everything into your own database, yeah, yeah, uh, you're gonna pay a lot, or just is completely impossible. But with us, uh, first of all, it's like no vendor lock-in, it's fully permissionless, and then you can like download even like terabytes of data, like gigabytes of data, essentially for free. Oh, that's and, cool. Uh, yeah, so it's a completely different game. Have you guys ever thought about uh, building a dashboard like Dune where you can make charts and whatnot, or is that? Uh, actually, this is what uh, Fiji uh, guys are doing. So okay. uh, that's like, I think the power of like decentralization right. is that like we don't really have to do anything our own. <laughs> yeah, it's more like there is like a mitzellum where like people like build this like without even our involvement. Or yeah, like nice. for example, like this index data by Giant Squid. Right. Uh, I'm super happy that uh, right now it's completely decentralized in the way that it's like. A, another company doing that and that really like, demand they have their own roadmap yeah, yeah they have like because it's kind of like not our core business and they obviously do it like even like better and it's like a lot more efficient when decentralized that way right yeah not just like technology wise but also like people wise right so uh it's uh, a lot more maintainable sweet i actually uh, think it's similar to l1s right where like of course and we're also like building some showcase and flagship products ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, more like in the AI agent space though, where we're like uh, working on something. Yeah, nice. uh, but I think the main thing is really that all of these other things can be built by other people. So you basically just give them the infrastructure, you give them the picks and shovels, right? You give them the tooling. Yeah, yeah. And if the dev UX is good, if, if people like it and you keep on improving over time, well then it's like starts growing and building up and you get more and more cool features and tools around it. Uh, but personally, Personally, I was always a big like dashboard fan. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's why I had to smile and we had this discussion often internally. But then in the end, it just always is there, there are other people out there which have more time to build better dashboards, like sure. better yeah. kind of Dune style platforms than we can do it. And I think that's essentially where we're like, okay, let's just focus on what we do very well and work on BD and kind of like grow it out and see if other people are interested in building the other part of the cool things which people might, uh, like end users might consume, right? Yeah. And this is, uh, yeah, that's essentially it. That's amazing. Build great infrastructure, give people access to it and, and we all build together. Guys, it was so awesome to deep dive with you here. I love getting into the weeds sometimes, peering behind the curtain and seeing all this stuff we rely on, sometimes in a dangerous way, to understand what's really happening. Uh, behind everything we do. So thanks very much for coming on the show and uh, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having us. It was a pleasure.